just out walking the animals here and I thought that I would use this as an intro into the video. I am getting ready to shoot you guys a video about the Benchmade 940 that I currently own. It's gonna be a full video. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it done tonight, but this will at least be the intro. So did a bunch of sharpening, got the canopy torn apart-ish, used the old frame to uh, piecemeal stuff together with a, a uh, used an old frame that was eight by eight to put that 10 by 10 canvas off the one that collapsed. So we'll take a look at that. But I hurt my back all over again, trying to put the frame up before I, uh, just being me and wouldn't wait. Matt said he would come help me, but I went ahead and got the frame out and started doing all that. And when I was doing that, I hurt my back. So I was back at acupuncture yesterday. So Monday evening, I laid down didn't feel too bad. I woke up Tuesday morning and could barely walk. My back had locked up. The muscles were all spasmed. So I went back to acupuncture. And so maybe I'll put a couple pictures in that. The doctor asked me after he got, he put the needles in my back and everything. And he said, okay, do you want one needle here or five needles, three needles here and two in your hand? And so I left it up to him and said, which is going to, which is going to help more? He said the five. I said, okay, why would you ask? And he says, because they're all going to hurt. <laughs> and he wasn't wrong. So we'll take a look at those pictures here in a minute. As you can see, I have temporarily piecemealed two different canopies together. So I do have a tent up to which to work. <clears throat> so somebody was asking me why I don't, why don't you sharpen in a house? If you guys, uh, somebody said it in the comments, if you guys really looked at how much stuff is here that is on this workbench that is just like permanent parts of this. I have an entire set of these files. I have so much stuff. But at any rate, that's beside the point because like I promised you guys, I am going to talk about the Benchmade Osborne 940. <clears throat> so as you can tell, I'm feeling a little under weather. My daughter and I went to Knott's Berry Farms and I think we brought something back. We're both not feeling well. Um, this is a knife that's uh, they've been out just about 10 years. I want to say they've been out about 10 years. Uh, and I remember seeing them when they first came out and I really wanted one. Um, they come in separate different variants. This is the Benchmade, the original Benchmade 940. They have a 940 Tac 1, which is carbon fiber. And then there's another one that I can't remember the nomenclature for it. It's another 940 that is uh, done in G10. And they also come in a couple steels. Now, I do know that my friend Matt has an original uh, first production run and his is in a different steel than what I'm about to tell you. But they basically, this is how it goes. You got um, S90V and S30V. They come in a couple different steels. Now there is, there's some, there's a, few, a couple of like sprint runs that they did for different companies and things like that that may be a little bit different. But basically you have S30, V and S90V, which I've sharpened the S90V ones. I like them. I'm not a big fan of S30V, but this seems to do okay. It's holding a pretty good edge. I only took mine to a thousand grit. But this is a knife that I've wanted for years and never had a chance to get one. Uh, a guy named Joshua Stone, uh, Jason Stone, Joshua Stone. Uh, I can't remember. He's got several, he's got a couple different handles on YouTube and Instagram. But anyway, while we were at Blade Show West, he came up to me, he found me at the show, told me he was gonna be there, 
and told me he had a gift for me. And he had a Benchmade 940 that he had sharpened down to nothing. It was, it was really, really thin and had been worn and used. And we went to the Benchmade table before we left and I dropped this off with them and they put a new blade in it. Now, I didn't pay any attention when it first came, when he first gave it to me, because it basically went straight to Benchmade. Um, but this one is, is centered. And that's been my complaint with a lot of the Benchmade 940 series. I hear geese. I hear geese. Geese are migrating. Um, the, the thing is that a lot of them are uh, off center, especially the 940-1, which is the carbon fiber version. Mine is not. So mine is just the original aluminum with the uh, S35VN, or I'm sorry, S30V blade. Now, it was green and I ceramic coated it. And as I suspected, the ceramic coating is not holding up as it would on steel or titanium, but I wanted to have my own wear pattern on it. So these knives, like I said, they've been out for about 10 years and they've got a pretty unique blade shape. Um, it's, it's really narrow from spine to apex, really narrow. And so is the handle, but it's not uncomfortably narrow. It's not, I felt knives that were, that dimensionally were too thin from spine to, you know, across the handle. This one is not. The, uh, it's got a titanium backspacer. We'll turn this around and take a look. This is a grail knife that is in that price range where a lot of people are like, that's one of your grail knives. You've got thousand dollar knives in your case. I was like, yeah, I know. I don't know what it is about it. I just never could justify, as much as I wanted one, could never justify purchasing one. So let's turn this around, take a quick look at it. Um, this is going to be a video that, that where it's out of character. I have a lot of people that think I hate Benchmade and they think I hate other companies. And they, they say I complain too much about stuff. But that's been the purpose of this channel. So we'll turn this around and I'll tell you some of the issues that I ran into with this one when I was, uh, only sharpening. The only issue I saw was when I was sharpening. So let's turn it around and take a look at it. <laughs> oh, I got you here. I'll, I'll show you why. I uh, Why I don't sharpen inside. One, it makes a mess. And this is just the stuff here. Um, this is just the stuff that is on my workbench on a regular given day. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that... This gets used for removing adhesive. I don't use this to lubricate you guys' knives. Just in case you're asking, I remove adhesive before I sharpen your guys' knives because it's bad for stones if there's any adhesive. But let's move my safety goggles, move my coffee cup, move my iPhone stand. That beer can's been there for like a week. <clears throat> and look at this dirty part of the table right here. So, here we go. Benchmade 940, the original version. <coughs> it does use the axis lock, which I have come to like. I like I like the ability to close or open a knife. I like the ability to close a knife without getting my fingers in the travel of the blade. And so those of you guys that don't know how it works in here, as you can see, the, the spring, there's a spring tension on that little round bar that sits in your detent. And when you pull down, you overcome, you basically push that back and then it drops into that rounded area. And then it drops onto a really long, large shelf that's in the blade. And I wish I, I could demonstrate it some other way, but you can see it. It's pretty far on there. And then you pull back and you can see there's your shelf that that sits on. Lock up on it is on, on a... Uh, axis lock is really good and the thing is as these faces wear together there's that face there and there's the face of that pin as these wear together they're going to match wear and then that's going to allow that to continue to push forward a little further than it currently is and so you're going to you're going to maintain that lockup. so like i said aluminum handles i uh, anodized <coughs> or not anodized i'm sorry i uh ceramic coated all the hardware except for the axis lock. So you've got 
the nice thing about this is you have a rather slender, really light knife that opens up into a full-sized EDC. I mean, that is, that's got a really thin profile. Nice shape, nice profile, and then it opens up into a full-sized EDC knife. Now, the only thing is, with the blade being rather narrow, you don't get a lot of distance from the origin of the grind to the apex for for the thinning that you get in some knives. Uh, let's say the Farron Forge Buck, or I got a couple others that are real. Uh, the Rat 1, the Rat 2, those have a wider blade, and that allows you more more distance to take off more material. You still got a nice thick spine to support it, but then it comes up and it thins. This kind of just comes up and drops off. Now, it is really sharp, and like I said, I only did about a thousand grit on mine, you can see. Fairly coarse, but I wanted to use this for a lot of things. So this has been, this has been a pretty much a go-to leader in their line for a while now. Uh, these Osborne knives, they hold up well. These have a really straight blade with a little bit of belly up towards the front, but it's not an unuseful blade. Like you would think that it being that straight for that far and then you got the belly, that you would want more belly for the length. You guys see the knives that I normally carry and they have a lot more belly. But this is really light. Um, I'll get the scale out. When we turn this around, I'll get the scale out and we'll actually weigh it. But I can't tell you guys how much I've always wanted one of these. And this is the this is the variant I wanted with the titanium backspacer. I don't like carbon fiber, really, to tell you the truth. I have one knife that has carbon fiber. I love that knife, but I really only like it because it it's an amazing knife and it, it's lighter than the other variants. Um, so when you take this apart in here, there's two steel plates here that this sit in. You can kind of see them in there. Everything else is aluminum, which means that this is extremely light. It is possibly the lightest knife I own. I put it in my pocket and I forget it's there. And the nice thing is you can carry this in a, in a hip pocket or a side pocket on maybe a pair of cargo pants. And it's not something that's gonna pull your pants down. It's light, but it's not too light. Um, I've talked about that, about the substance and things like that. The only thing I really like uh, that I would really like is I wish it was a different material other than aluminum <clears throat> and I know titanium is heavier but it's it just wears and it scratches so easily and things like that you can see I'm already wearing off the ceramic coating is really robust but the thing is it's all up to the material it's on and this has gotten used over the last oh I want to say two or three weeks that I've been carrying it pretty much exclusively it's gotten a good bit of use. You can see I'm already wearing the ceramic and there might be some wear marks on the blade. Yeah, there's a few wear marks on the blade, but not, nothing significant. I have had to sharpen it twice. Uh, I cut a lot of cardboard with it. But the action on it's really silky smooth now that I've got it broke in with the new blade. Uh, I've had it apart twice. The nice thing too is they're really easy to clean up. You can see down in there, you have a lot of room. So you can kind of just get this you can run it under the tap and then just put another drop of lube if you need to i do have to say that when they said that the kpl has uh it, it does not wash out as readily as other lubricants they are right because i lubed this when i first got it had it apart put it back together i've washed out this because it's been filled with lint and grunt gunk and nastiness a couple times <clears throat> So that KPL does, has some staying power. But yeah, guys, the Benchmade 940, I, like I said, I've always wanted one. I cannot thank Joshua enough for providing me with something I've always wanted. And uh, we'll get this turned around and we'll do an actual weight. I'll give you the actual weight of it in hand. Not, not what they post on the website. You know, sometimes that might be different. So let's get this turned back around. All right, guys, I went in and got my scale. Um, out of character for me, we are going to actual get you <coughs> an actual weight on this. <coughs> and we'll look at the blade. I am uh, I'm getting sick, guys. I don't know if there's going to be anything going on this weekend. Let's get this thing turned on. Let's see. We want to look at it in ounces. So put it down here. Two and seven-eighths ounces. Now, they say on their website, uh, it, I think it's three ounces is what they have it listed. 
So, uh, you're looking at less than three ounces on this. Two and seven eighths ounces. Let's, let's go ahead for our European viewers. Do it in grams. It's 82 grams for you guys. So 82 grams, 2.78 ounces. That's light. That is very light. Now let's look. Um, from heel to tip, you are right at three and a half inches. So that is a full EDC. That's a full three and a half inches. And I'm not, I'm not lying, guys. You'll put this in your pocket and forget it's there. It, it's light. It's thin. It's not too thin. Um, it, it's actually thicker than a Grimsmo Norseman, which I have one that I just sharpened for a guy here. I just hate the idea of sending. I love the Grimsmo Norseman. I, it's another, another grail knife of mine, but I, I don't think I'll ever have one. So yeah, light, thin, full-sized EDC. A lot of people carry them for work purposes. I can see that. And I... It's, I don't want you guys to get it mixed up. A lot of times you guys hear me being hypercritical about things like this knife. I had to put in some work to get the, the edge even. It had the, the, the typical, same thing I'm seeing in the Spydercos, the same thing I see on Benchmades. There's, it's just a flaw in the sharpening. And I mean, when it comes down to it and people say that I'm being too critical, well, that's what this channel's about. It's, it's to point out the things that irritate me. And a lot of times it's edge stuff. Uh, fit and finish is another one. Um, fit and finish on one of these is always, I mean, fit and finish on Benchmade, nine times out of 10 is going to be right up there. Spyderco as well. I love Spyderco knives. That last video, people are like, oh, you just don't like Spyderco. I've owned more Spydercos. The only, the only company's knives that I've ever owned more of than Spydercos has been uh, uh, Cold Steel. So it's not that I don't like Cold Steel. It's not that I don't like Benchmade. It's not that I don't like Spyderco. I just wish that these, the, the problem is that these American companies are allowing themselves to be beaten by Chinese companies. They're letting it happen because they just don't, they don't do the QC. That, that's been my biggest complaint about, on all these videos, my complaints have always been about quality control. It's not that they don't make quality products, it's just that they're not taking a good hard look at it. And when you're looking at the, the I can get this knife for, let's say, let's say I think I saw it for 180, if I remember correctly. The current price is around 180. Depends on where you go, anywhere between 150 and 200. Let's say it's in the 150 to 200 range. I can get a $40 Best Tech that has got better quality assurance done to it, better action. I mean, it's, this, is, this really isn't a flipper, but I mean, I love, I would love to say that American companies can, ca can catch up and stuff like this, but if, if you've got companies that are doing it better for less, it's just, they have to take a look at, okay, do we, do we have to really make that much money? And I'm not saying like cut, cut employees and things like that. I'm saying like these people that are getting ultra rich on things and it, it goes along with a lot of things in this country that we just have this sense of entitlement that well I've I've I built this company I I've, I've I've earned that right to, to pay myself this much and yes and no I, I do the same thing I have to figure how much I need to get paid but I'm just basically tell you guys the truth I'm basically trying to do sustainment I want to be able to run this business and I want to be able to continue to live in a house and I want my daughter to continue to skate. I'm not trying to get rich, which is why a lot of times you guys, I'll do stuff for you guys and there's times I do stuff and I don't even charge you. Yeah, it's work, but fuck man, you guys, you guys deserve it. You're paying me to do something and if I can throw you a freebie, I'll do it. But you know, I guess, I guess I am a bit controversial in my attitudes towards things and the way I present things. So. I understand this channel's never gonna be one of those those million subscriber channels. It's never gonna be. I'm not that I am not that content creator that can that can garner that kind of a uh, following. But I'm gonna tell you tell you what guys, I'm never gonna lie to you. If I see something wrong with something, I'm gonna point it out. And it's not that I'm trying to damage another company. If anything, 
I had somebody say that, I, like I said, they said, I, I can't see my own flaws. And I would say it's exactly the opposite. That's how you get better. And pointing out these flaws that people want to gloss over and, and things just because they're enamored with a product. And, and they, they don't see it. And then when they do see it, then, then they're all, then they get upset. And they, but they don't get upset at the right person. They get upset with me for pointing it out. That's the way I look at it. I think that you guys deserve to know. And is every bench made Miss Ground? No. I've had a couple bench maids that come in. The older bench maids were great. Um, same with Spider I love Spider Co knives. I've had four different Endura models and two Delicas. And then a bunch of other Spider Co's. I've had the, the, the uh, what was the one that I auctioned off that I've had? I've, I mean, I've, I've got two Spider Co's now that I own. I own one of the little Fireflies and I own the Matriarch 2. Um, trying to think of the other model that I owned. Was it the, uh, it was a native. I had a native in XHP. I gave that to my brother-in-law. <clears throat> I've owned numerous Spider Co knives and I, I liked them all for what they were. I just, if there's a problem with an item on it, then I'm going to let you know about the problems that I have with these knives. So that's that. I don't want to go on a rant. And I'm not going to call anybody out. It was a, it was a conversation on a, in the comments, and I just I wanted to address that. So if the things that I say about a knife offend you, maybe you should look at why it's offending you. Is it just that you're upset that you didn't notice it? Or is it just that you are enamored with that company and that product and those people? Like, I'm not going to lie. I get upset when people say bad things about Fair and Forge because they're my friends. I'm, I'm truly am friends with, with the two people that run that company, but I, I, I have to look at the complaints that people make about things objectively. You know, are you complaining that you don't like the design? Are you complaining about quality? Because if you're complaining about quality, I would say there's probably no basis for that. Like I've seen the knives that they make and I know the scrutiny that they put into the, I guess they call it pro series now after the, the whole thing, the, blow up on Instagram with the uh, other knife makers, but um, you can't, if you're going to argue quality, you're going to lose. If you're going to argue you just don't like their designs, fine. If you, if you want to say you don't like them as people, well, that's fine. I can't argue that. That's your opinion. I would say that I think they're great people. So longer video, hadn't gotten a video out to you guys for a while, so I thought I would just do this. I'm going to have my coffee, two knives to sharpen, pack stuff up. And I'm going to rest my back today because my back is still hurting. I would like to be able to do all the stuff we've got planned this weekend. My daughter and I have, um, my daughter has another ice skating exhibition this weekend. So you guys might get to see that. We shall see. All right, guys. Love you all. I can't tell you how much I appreciate the support. The fact that I have almost 3,500 subscribers now. Can't tell you how much I appreciate that. That's, that's way more than I ever thought I would have. So like I said, Patreon is always an option. I'll see if I'm, I've, my computer's down, so I'm having a hard time editing things on my wife's computer. It won't let me do all the stuff that I was doing on my, my computer. So as soon as Brian gets me my PC back, you'll probably start seeing the little drop boxes and, and things like that. But like I said, Patreon's always an option. You can find me on Patreon. It's just search my name. So if you want to support the channel, those of you that do support the channel, thank you very much. It's amazing. You guys take it easy. Love you. I'll see you next time. Remote still doesn't work. <laughs> I bought a new one. It don't work. <laughs>